Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Educational Gamer and today we want to look at the future of the aircraft carrier and really its current state and whether it's still a viable weapon system. Now we're going to do that by looking at Command. Command is a naval simulation game. You might actually call it much more of a simulation than a game. It's, it's very, very much close, uh, tilted towards realism. Um, and that allows us to draw some interesting conclusions, especially on the viability of the carrier as a weapon system due to recent developments, uh, especially by the Chinese, Chinese, to be honest. Right, uh, we are going to have a look at that through the new campaign, and the new campaign will feature one weapon system, uh, which we have seen over here, that is the HMS Queen Elizabeth, uh, one of the new carrier, or the new carrier of the United Kingdom. And I think, before we go into the game, I want to talk um, a couple of seconds, at least, um, about this new carrier. And that is uh, because it shows one of the most interesting decisions, I think, in, in recent times in um, the UK um, armament programs. And that is a decision that was made in 2012. And it sounds really, really tiny, but it really, really isn't. So in 2012, the UK um, review decided that for the carrier air group, so for the planes that was uh, that would man sort of this carrier, they'd use the F-35 B variant instead of the F 35C variant. It sounds really, really like a tiny, tiny change, but it really isn't. Now, what's the difference? Um, as you'll probably know, the F 35 is the, it's called the Joint Strike Fighter. It was developed by the US. Uh, it has three variants the A variant, just for the Air Force, the B variant for the Marines. It's uh, like the Harrier, it's a, a VTL O type craft, so it can uh, land and start. Uh, vertically instead of just horizontally, and the C variant, which was for the Navy, um, and which is a normal carrier craft. Now, what does it mean to switch from the C variant to the B variant? As you can see down here in this aircraft, it has a little sky ramp up here. So, um, how an aircraft is launched on the B variant, uh, or sorry, on the Queen Elizabeth in its current configuration, it, it will just sort of start over here, it will accelerate in power, it would spin up its engines, and then it's going to try to gain as much speed as possible over here, and then get a little kink upwards from, from the slope, um, and then be airborne. As you'll know, um, air aircraft do need a certain minimum speed uh, to remain airborne, so um, in order to gain that speed over here, there are certain weight limitations, because the power of the engines is so, only so much, um, so Basically, you'll be able to lift about, I think, six tons or so uh, in the air with this configuration. Now, on the other hand, a C variant would have meant that the aircraft carrier would have uh, been equipped with a catapult. So, uh, with a mechanism on the ship that gives an extra uh, power towards uh, the aircraft. And that would have allowed it uh, to be basically at the same speed, but carry much, 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 much more weight. Now that is an important difference because the weight that the aircraft um, can bring to the air, um, well, the airframe itself is pretty much um, the same weight. So the difference really is the fuel and the weapons that it can carry. Now, in the B variant, consequently, uh, you'll have a lot less fuel, you'll have a lot less weapon systems that you can carry. Um, so that means in order to make a strike, the Queen Elizabeth, in its current configuration, with the B variant and without a catapult, will have to be much closer towards its intended strike targets. Uh, whereas with the C variant, it could have stayed much, much, much more further uh, away from shores. Or alternatively, if it had traveled to the same direction, um, it could have carried much, much more weapons per aircraft uh, towards its strike target. So. That is a very, very interesting choice, I think. Um, so we are very much looking forward then uh, to joining in command over here. And we'll load up a new scenario. Uh, the scenario is called, no, sorry, it's not safe games. It's start a new scenario, life, and it's called Commonwealth Coalition. Um, in, this co in, in this conflict, um, we'll have India and Pakistan on the, in, in conflict. Um, and we'll be joining India as the UK. And at this point, I'm gonna um, keep this up over here so that you can read it for a second. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll uh, switch over to the intro by um, the publisher over here on this scenario. There's a little video, it's, a, it's about one minute 30 or so. Um, so you can watch that and then we'll get right back into the game. 
Pakistan and India are in a bitter disagreement again, but this time the situation is escalating dangerously. A few weeks ago, rocket strikes launched from the Pakistani border area hit several Indian army bases. But it is today's announcement that one of these salvo killed a group of visiting British officers. Although Islamabad is denying any involvement with the incident, it has sparked an unseemingly unstoppable series of events. With a public opinion that's now fired up by the desire for revenge and angered by the evasive responses of Pakistan, London has decided to join India in retaliation and deployed its new flagship to the region, the aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth. The carrier is backed up with the supersonic radar-equipped F-35Bs and escorted by the new Type 45 destroyers. British forces are joined by India's new carrier, the INS Vikrant, which has been rushed into service alongside the older ex-Kiev class INS Vikramaditya. Their goal is simple, deliver a punishing blow to Pakistan's armed forces and infrastructures while keeping the risk of a nuclear response to a minimum. In an effort to counter this move, Islamabad has secured active help from Beijing and purchased Chinese-built supersonic sea-skimming missiles specifically designed to hit supercarriers. HMS Queen Elizabeth will be their priority target. A new phase of naval warfare seems to be beginning. Will the carrier strike succeed, or are we witnessing the end of the flat top? So, here we are then. Let's load up this scenario. Um, you probably have read all of that. So, here we go. And this is our side briefing. So, the briefing that we as India-UK coalition get. Uh, war has broken out. Brutal grind. Uh, we want to do a deep strike. So, we're going to use our navy, our joint uh, Indian-UK navy to strike onto Pakistan uh, while the front is going on in Kashmir. So, at our disposal are the Queen Elizabeth, which we've talked about, uh, the Vikrant and Vikradam. I just won't be able to pronounce that. So the Vikrant is the new carrier. Uh, this one is sort of an older uh, Indian carrier. We have F-35s in the B variant, as we talked about, um, and we have MiG-29Ks, so a soviet design weapon um, that is prevalent on the Indian ships. Um, some anti-submarine warfare helicopters. Um, we also have a couple of submarines, shock round ambush and diesel electric submarines uh, from the Indian Navy. The enemy has one HQ-16 battery. We'll have to look at that in a second. Uh, a lot of anti-aircraft artillery batteries near all airports. I'm not sure it's, I'm not actually sure it's only going to be anti-aircraft artillery. I, I think there'll probably be some miss and missiles as well. Uh, some squadrons of Mirages and JF-17s. I think that's a Chinese variant of a Soviet design. I'm not actually sure. I'm sure it's a Chinese variant. Right. Um, all deployed with anti-ship missiles, so we are going to have uh, to be very, very careful. A couple of F-16s as an anti-air escort, significant number of leased Chinese airborne aerial warning systems and tanker aircraft. Uh, these are very interesting because these are multipliers. These are very, very flimsy designs. It's typically passenger aircraft that are converted in some fashion or at least on a similar scale. So if we could take these guys out, uh, all of the rest of the um, ships, uh, sorry, of the aircraft will probably be not be uh, very support, very, very, um, yeah, we will pretty much diminish their capability. Uh, there's also the Pakistan Navy, we'll have to be careful about that, and a couple of other navies, so there might be some neutrals in the area. Uh, we want to strike in the Omara area, targets of note are, okay, an armored brigade and infantry battalion, general reserve, we want to move, prevent their movement to the front. We can either attack them themselves or we can take the bridge nearby, okay. Um, the city has a naval base, base itself is not worthwhile but the oil refinery might be. And there might be a high value target if we <laughs> were to attack that. That sounds a little bit like what the Americans did to the Japanese in World War II uh, when they killed the uh, flight of Yamamoto and we have to respect certain areas. Okay. Let's enter the scenario. Let's have a look at our forces over here. 
So here we go, um, begin scenario, it has a duration of two days and we'll talk about the interface in a couple of seconds. So um, as you can see, it's it's a very much tilted towards realism. This is not a graphically interesting game, uh, but it is an interesting game for our purposes to have a look at a couple of things. So uh, firstly, our forces are in this sort of bluish uh, color. The enemy forces are in red, obviously. Uh, so these are our guys, uh, this is Pakistan. We are not to strike in this red area, so not too close to the front. Uh, we have to avoid entering Iranian airspace, so we don't, we can't go into here. Um, and this is basically what's left for us to strike. Now, uh, let's talk about a little bit about the symbols over here. So um, you can see everything is sort of circles or something similar. Uh, there are these circles that are just the lower half. These are submarines, so we have a couple of submarines in the forward area, which I find very useful. Um, because these will probably spot uh, a little bit for us. We also have a couple of ships. These are the full circles, or rather ship groups in this sense. Um, this is a surface group of eight ships, and there is a flight, so this upwards um, circle. This is a flight, so these are a couple of aircraft, in this case two MiG-29Ks. Um, and as you can see, this game simulates a lot of things. Everything, every number that you can see in here, pretty nearly every number that you can see in here, um, goes into the simulation. This is not just flavor text, all of that is simulated. So you can see everything has a certain dimension, it has a weight, um, it has detection cycles, it has a couple of sensors from just your Mark 1 eyeball, so just from normal <laughs> visual contacts, uh, to various radars and, and uh, similar things. And they do have various ranges that operate in certain bands and so on. Um, there are some mounts, so just guns um, and some aircraft stores from drop tanks to to all kinds of weapon systems, uh, like for example these AA guns over here. Oh, sorry, AA missiles. Right. So pretty straightforward. Four submarines, three groups of ships, one flight that is currently in the air, and which I think is just doing sort of a carry air patrol. That's fine. Let's briefly look at our enemy. Um, now let's actually start out with our forces. So um, let's start out with the core. There is the Queen Elizabeth carrier group um, and we are actually going to look at the unit composition out of that. So uh, you can see it has, it is centered around, it has four ships. Um, the HMS Duncan, which is a destroyer type. Well, yeah, got a miss missile destroyer. Um, and that's fine. Then we have Manmouth frigate and HMS Sutherland, another frigate, but most importantly Queen Elizabeth. So Queen Elizabeth carrier, um, this is an artist rendition over here, but you can nicely see the Skyram um, and you can see a couple of the aircraft that are being deployed over here. I'm not actually sure that that is the B variant. No, I, ca I can't uh, spot them uh, quite, as, uh, quite as well. Now, most importantly, obviously, about the Queen Elizabeth is not the ship so much itself, but its air group. Um, and we can have a look at the aircraft over here. So, let's have a look at that. Um, there are three types of aircraft on that. The Merlin, that's a helicopter, an airborne early warning. So this is basically a surveillance uh, type of helicopter. Uh, we have two of these. Uh, both of them are parked on the flight deck. Both of them are ready to be launched. We also have the Merlin helicopter, so um, medium, heavy, medium lift helicopter. Um, just general purpose, but in this layout it's probably used for anti-submarine warfare. Yes, you can see it does ha carry two stingrays. These are torpedoes, uh, air launch torpedoes. So basically, um, once these guys um, spot, for example, through the sonar boys, um, enemy submarines, they might drop um, this type of torpedo on them. It has a very small range, 4 nautical miles, uh, but it's pretty fast and there's a certain probability uh, that it would kill an enemy submarine. So yeah, uh, these are nice. Uh, four of them are ready, two of them are parked in hangar and are currently being maintained. And these will not be available to us in this scenario. Likewise, we do have 10 RF. Uh, 35s, uh, eight of which seem to be um, workable, two of which are in maintenance, so we not have access to these. Uh, but these guys will be our primary strike craft. 
F-35Bs. I think all in all, um, these are pretty good aircraft. Um, they are stealthy. They do have um, pretty good radar uh, suits, but, so we'll have to be careful a little bit about that. Um, very important, this, uh, these couple of numbers over here. So uh, the radar signature of these guys is very, very much suppressed um, compared to normal aircraft. So that's very good. Um, and hopefully that will allow us to have some capabilities. And we'll come back to these guys in a second just to see uh, what weapon systems are available to us. Let's uh, briefly look at our other aircraft uh, carriers over here. So here is Vikramaditya and Vikrant. I think this is another aircraft carrier. Yes, it is. Um, what aircraft have you got available? Not that many, six actually just. So a couple of other helicopters. Yeah, these are Soviet helicopters. Funny design with this double rotor, uh, but I think they are in a very similar role to our others. Um, yeah, these are air airborne early warning radars, so that's fine. Um, and more importantly, we have this MiG-29K Falkrums. So another type of um, multi-purpose. I think it's multi-purpose, right? Fixed wing multi-role carrier capable, yes. So these are Soviet craft, and just four of them though, so not that useful. A couple of more on the other carrier. Also a couple more helicopters. KA-28s. Yeah, that's an anti-submarine warfare, so similar. Uh, these guys are simply there to uh, find subs and fight them. And more, yeah, and pretty much more MiG-29Ks, so that's fine. Let's briefly look at the other uh, craft over here. Uh, what have we got? The Duncan, um, that's a destroyer as we, as we talked about. It does carry quite a lot of weapons, stingrays, uh, which I think simply are. Oh, it actually carries also a couple of aircraft, probably helicopters. Wildcat helicopters, anti-submarine warfare. Yeah, small aircraft, uh, but fine. That, that's good. It simply enhances our capabilities against enemy subs, and that is very important. It also has a couple of uh, weapon systems on its own. It has these Aster 15 and Aster 30 craft over here. These are just short range anti air systems, so um, yeah, basically missiles um, that will defend us against um, yeah enemy aerial attack on, on a short range. 20 nautical miles, that's not too important. Uh, a little bit more important will probably be this harpoon. Uh, harpoon air, uh, craft, sorry, harpoon missiles um, are missiles that will be usable against um, enemy ships, basically. Does it say so? Yeah. Oh, actually, harpoon. So, oh yeah, surface ships, land structures, one ways. So that's very good. It is capable of quite a lot of range. I think it's probably about sixty, no, seventy-five nautical miles. So that's fine. Um, very fast, very good, um, and, and that will be some strike capability, although eight missiles are not that much. Then we have a couple of guns, some decoys, some chavs, so um, anti-radar stuff, so that's all very nice, but not too, too, too important. More harpoons. What's Sea Captor? Oh yeah, probably another anti-air missile, yeah. But it's vertically launched, so that's, that's interesting, but... Not too critical. Stingroys, yeah, pretty much similar. What have we got on the Indian guy? Oh, does Queen Elizabeth carry weapons on its own? It does not. Uh, what do we have on the Indian side? We have the Barrack, which is another, yeah, six nautical miles. Very, very short range defense. Uh, Brahmos, and that looks a little bit more like an anti-ship weapon. It is, yeah, quite a, a thousand pound yeah, this is quite a heavy, heavy weapon. Three ton missile um, against ships, and it looks like it was Soviet developed. Has a huge range, 160 nautical miles. That's very, very good. Um, and indeed, weapons like these are what will make it very, very difficult for us, especially uh, once we have a look at the Chinese weapons, um, which we actually should do in a second. Um, right. Improved sticks, what are you? You are a shorter ranged, smaller type anti-air, anti-ship, and anti-surface weapon. Ah, 
is interesting, but it's not actually it's not honestly very good. It's early nineteen seventies technology. You can see it's it's not great. It's also a Soviet weapon, I think. Right, uh, what have we got over here? Similar stuff. Service to air, Grimson. These are only these are a little bit Yeah, they are they're aged, pretty much. This is further range, which is good. 40 nautical ones, we can do something with that. Couple of salvos, chavs, yeah, that's fine. Let's um, get over to our submarines. We have the Astute, so a um, British uh, nuclear powered um, attack submarine, very nice to see. Relatively new. It has a couple of Tomahawk um, missiles, which have a huge anti-land range. So that's extremely nice to see. And these might be very, very useful for some early strikes to just soften up uh, really enemy air defenses. This range is, is excellent, actually. But you'll probably not be very fast. No, you're not. Um, still, very good weapon. Good to have that. Basically, it's a cruise missile. Uh, what's the SCAT? decoys and you have spearfish so another yeah another type of torpedo yeah nothing to write home about but these 16 missiles might come in extremely handy uh, what are you you are the chakra you are a nuclear powered attack submarine another one you have some anti-air missiles that's very interesting a couple of anti-naval missiles what are you actually? Oh, okay, so you are a missile that can be launched and that will then drop a torpedo. Very interesting, Soviet design. I don't think any NATO member has developed anything um, during the Cold War in a similar fashion. So you launch a missile, it goes over to another area, drops the deep torpedo there, and thereby is much, much faster. Um, and once you are in a dual situation, that's a lot better. Some decoys, that's not too great and another torpedo so yeah that's good but no weapon against any land targets then we have these diesel electric submarines just equipped with a couple of torpedoes yeah you'll not be not be extremely useful but as a forward picket I think that's gonna be alright and another submarine again some anti-air weapons some what is that guided weapon yeah, anti-surface, 160 miles, that's pretty good. Little targets, ships, 200, interesting. So you do have, oh, it's a sizzler. Yeah, 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 it's, a, it's that type of weapon that can actually be deployed in um, a 40-foot container and that might be uh, used unwillingly by uh, some merchantmen or so. Um, in the... Soviet weapon. Also another torpedo. Okay. Good. Okay, so these are our main uh, elements, main ships. Um, we should basically have another sh small look at the F-35 in particular before we go on uh, to have a little bit of a look on our enemy. So F-35, uh, we are capable of carrying uh, various different layouts of that. So you can see the loadout of these four, first four aircraft is an AA loadout, an anti-air loadout with the AIM-120C, um, pretty much an anti-air weapon. 60 nautical miles range, that's very good. One thing that is very important to see is uh, the sensors over here, so it, is ha it has an active uh, radar seeker on its own, so um, you don't have to actually illuminate the target by the aircraft. This is a fire, pretty much a little bit of fire and forget weapon. Not quite, uh, you can it does have a data link and you can do some uh, course, correla uh, course corrections in mid-flight and the terminal guidance uh, will be on its own. But you don't have to um, have an active radar signature on your aircraft the entire time. So that's very good to see. Uh, home on jam, that's also very good. So it can't be jammed that well. Anti-air all aspects, so it can be fired from all directions basically on the enemy. So yeah, pretty much a good Pretty, pretty good missile, I think. Um, also, I think one of the standard missiles of the pretty much entire, well, certainly the US, although I don't know about the variant. 
We also have uh, this other layout down here, uh, which does carry some anti-aircraft weapons in the internal weapons bay, but it also carries the GBU-32, which is a little bit the type of bomb, I think. It's it's a guided bomb, so it can be, uh, yeah, it's a glide bomb, so it can be uh, launched from a certain altitude, um, and then it will glide towards the targets for the rest about 12 nautical miles, but it does, it is guided, uh, so it does have a very high probability to hit um, and a very low circular error circular <laughs> error probability so um, b basically you can expect it to land uh, within 10 uh, meters of what you are targeting so yeah this is a ground ground attack um, craft how much damage can you actually do 200 kilos of tritinol so that gives us 300 damage points interesting um, are there any other loadouts that we could select? Yes, we could also select paveways. Um, paveways are bombs, which are... Oh yeah, there's a nice picture. So this is the bomb, this is the um, targeting system. So it's a very similar layout. It's, I think, it's a glide bomb, yeah. Weapon coast. It's it's actually very similar in, in what it can do. But it is uh, has lower damage potential. Although it is more accurate. Um, that's nice to see. But on the other hand, it is day only, so it can't be used at night because it needs to be illuminated. Uh, another thing that this does tell us, is, uh, which is pretty important, is this radius over here. So um, basically you can see that our GPU layout, um, the one that we are using actually at the moment, um, does have a strike radius of 400 nautical miles. So we need to get within 400 nautical miles about of uh, the enemy just to launch our strike. And you can read a little bit about the information about that uh, over here. So it has a high, high, high profile, uh, which means high approach towards the enemy, a high altitude launch, high um, and, and getting away high. Um, that's opposed to attack profiles where sometimes you come in lower just to avoid uh, the radar signature. But I think with the F-35, which are of course stealth weapons, uh, we have to, yeah, we, we can be a little bit more, um, yeah, we, we can be a little bit more conservative. So um, here you can see a little bit more about that. We don't need to do that uh, in detail, uh, but it, uh, the basic gist of that is that we do have to get pretty close to about within 400 nautical miles of the enemy. You can also see that once we start to fit some external weapons, this really drops down uh, quite dramatically. Right, so uh, with, in the last couple of minutes, I just want to look at the enemy disposition. I don't think we'll know too much about that. We know about a couple of airports over here, over here, 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 Pashni Airport, and the Amara Airport down here, along with the Highway Bridge, yes, I think this will be one of our targets, and the Naval Base, uh, which does include probably the oil refinery. And we know about a couple of radar installations over here, so a Chinese type radar over here, and over here. And you can see the range, the probable range uh, where uh, of of that um, radar system. Of course, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It depends a little bit about um, the aspect of the aircraft. So an aircraft that uh, that flies sort of this way would be um, would probably be spotted, where an aircraft that flies directly towards this radar uh, might only be spotted later. And of course, a stealth aircraft might be spotted even later, um, and so on and so forth. And you can have um, some terrain coverage. So. Uh, if you come in very low or if you're covered by terrain features, uh, you might not actually see any um, any radar signature. And we'll have to uh, develop a strategy a little bit about what we can do about that um, and how we can approach uh, our targets over here mainly without this uh, ra <laughs> radar dish being uh, too much of a problem. And probably we'll uh, try to launch something. Towards our initial question, is the carrier still useful? Um, I think the main difficulty will be to be close enough towards over here uh, while not being a spotted and not being exposed to uh, the Pakistani Chinese counterattacks. And that is something that we'll talk a bit about a little bit um, in the next episode when we develop our strategy and when we actually start our game. 
So, looking forward to that. Let me know um, if you like the series by, of course, uh, having a like or so, or commenting. Um, yeah, I look very much forward to it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.